didn't get refreshed, you got refleshed. <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Sweet presence of daddy today. Glory. It's going to be a beautiful day when we get out of here. Amen. Thank you, Master. How many of y'all know we're in the end times? If you don't, you don't know, you know it now, amen? You know, there's a lot of people that don't know we're in the end days. They just don't get it. They have no idea. But there are signs, you know, that are fulfilling prophecy. One of the greatest things that we know that we are in the end times is associated with the seven feasts of the Lord. Because... The next feast of the Lord is called the Feast of Trumpets. <laughs> That's the removal of the body of Christ from the earth. And all those that are not right with him will be left behind. That's the next feast to be fulfilled. That's how we know it's the end times, end days. And if you ain't right with God, you will be left behind. This is serious. This is dangerous. And when we are entering a time of great despair for the world, great confusion is being released. There's a tremendous deception and delusion that's going on. And people are biting the bait, even Christians. It's amazing to me. The message was given me today, especially for all those on Facebook. And many of the household of God that have been caught in the final delusion. Would you turn to Revelation 12 for a moment? Oh, hallelujah. For those that never read the Bible, it would be a good thing to start to pick up because the Bible has all the information you need to know what time and season we're in, to know what you're fighting, to discern who's right with God and who's not right with God, to discern organizations and all kinds of other things that are under Satan's control or under surrender of Christ's control. See, my visitation from the Lord, the first thing he relieved me from was the deception that the Bible was just a story. When he said to me, that's my truth. When he revealed to me that these are his words that were recorded, I realized that I had been deceived my whole life. Even though I believed that there was a God, I never found out about his way. See, his way of life is in the Bible. And his way of life is in the Spirit. And without walking in his way of life, which is a pathway, and the word says that the gate is what? The path is narrow and difficult, you will end up at another door. Or you may never even reach the door. See, there's a lot of so-called Christians that say they believe, but they don't follow. Why don't they follow? Because they don't follow what this says. And they can't interpret it correctly because they've disconnect them, themselves from the Spirit. Oh, they might have got baptized once in the Holy Spirit, but now because of their agreement with delusion, it's severed them. Does everybody understand? See, we are in the end days of deception, end times of deception that are resulting in a, in a strong delusion, great delusion, what we call the final delusion, which is going to captivate many people. So we've got to rescue as many as possible that have been taken in this delusion. 
this delusion is a curse and it is a trance. Does everybody understand this? And I'm going to explain this as, through the Bible, what God says, not what man says, not what emotion says. Amen? So in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7, let's speak it. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. This was Satan. And he was control of a third of the angels. He had access to the Lord's throne all the time. He was God's right-hand man and praise and worshiper. Amen. He was the leader. And he exalted himself. See, everyone has a free will. Even the angels have a free will. I have a free will. You have a free will. I can choose to walk away from God anytime I want. And so can you. And you can also choose to agree with something that will disconnect you from the Spirit of God and walk in deception. Because you have a free will. Look what happened to Lucifer who became Satan. He saw something that he was jealous of. God's authority. He wanted to be like God. Isn't that how he tricked Adam and Eve? <laughs> he tried to tell them, God's holding something back from you. That same deception is still going on. So we see that they were removed from the throne of God. Amen? In verse 9, let's speak it. So the great dragon was cast out, who's called the what? The serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Again, he deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, listen, deception is an arena of control. Amen? Especially in the military, if you can deceive your opponent, <laughs> you can get control. So one of the things that the powers of darkness are doing is they're getting to an escalation. See, they've created their own race already. They have it. There are hybrids. There's all kind of demonic force. They have enough people under their control for their own race now. Now they want to destroy everyone else. Does everybody understand this? Now they want to destroy everyone else. They're willing to even to destroy the earth if they can. See, when Lucifer was sentenced, it says he got removed from the throne. He got sentenced to the earth, its atmosphere, and the second heaven. That's where his sentence is. But he's out on bail. But he will fulfill his sentence at the end when God will destroy him in the lake of fire. But he's going to put him in jail for a thousand years. He's got to do time before he kills him. So what the enemy, the powers of darkness are trying to do is get people to come against people and destroy one another. Why? Because their focus right now is to steal, kill, and destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. So there's something about deception that happens. If the enemy can put you in a place of deception, when you agree with a, a doctrine of deception or anything that's deceiving to you, that is a key that opens the door to a demonic presence then they have access to you. That's why we're hard-pressed in every area through music, through media, through all kinds of things. People are listening to all kinds of things that are just are incorrect. Schools, teachers, professors, promoting socialism, trying to teach the young children that socialism is good. Why are they trying to do that? Because we've been invaded. The earth has been invaded by an alien race. They are called demons. It's Satan's kingdom. And they need a host to operate. 
in this realm. So they've created some of their own hybrids, synthetic bodies, but they use humans much easier. There are shape shifters and all kinds of demonic forces. Even the word tells us you never know who you're going to entertain. But they've infiltrated governments, music, movie, Hollywood, schools, education. They've been waiting for this moment right now what you and I are in in this season. They don't care anymore. They're getting in front of the TV and lying like pigs. And they don't care. Because they know that they've been found out. They know that they've been exposed. So they're trying to kill everything and everyone before they're removed. Does everybody understand this? We are in a time and season right now that is phenomenal. Phenomenal. All right, let's go a little further. Verse 10, it says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. That was Jesus. For the accuser of our brethren, who still accuses them before our God day and night, has been cast down. Now the devil uses people to accuse the brethren. And it says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Hmm. But what? Woe, without eternity, to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows he has a short time. So he's doing everything he can right now. This is not just one person. This is an organization and a kingdom. You've got to remember that the ruler of this earth is Satan's kingdom. He's been the ruler of this earth for thousands of years, ever since he took authority from Adam. Remember, Lucifer was in the garden serving Adam. That's why he had a access. He was the promoter of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Evil. But Jesus was the promoter of life through the tree of life. So something that happened in the garden that was so prophetically profound. Because when an Adam and Eve were deceived by the serpent, they became cursed. The first thing the enemy does, again, if he can deceive you, he'll blind you. The fruit of deception is blindness. Everyone say it with me. The fruit of deception is blindness. Let's go to Genesis 3. See, now, the natural man, the carnal man, can't grab hold of this, what's being said. It's hard for them. Because they're still caught up in the matrix, in the fantasy world, the temporary realm. And Genesis 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. Now the serpent, hello, was what? More cunning than any beast. Beast here represents fallen angel. He was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The first problem was is the woman gave him attention. That was the first problem. And the woman said to the serpents, that was the second problem. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you what? Touch. That means agree with what it says. Lest you what? Die. That was the curse of death. Then the serpent said to the woman, now here's a woman quoting this what the Lord said to them, right? She's quoting this to the serpent. (laughs) 
Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. He just called God a liar. For God knows in that day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open. Now, you got to remember something. He's promising her something to see more, like God. When she was already seeing like God. In fact, she saw God face to face. So did Adam. They walked with him in the garden. And then it says, For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like what? God. Were they already like God? Yes, they were made in his image and likeness, weren't they? Knowing good and evil. So he wanted to get them from stop eating to the tree of life to maintain life because they were eternal beings to come over to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil so that they would lose sight, life, sight, and life. Why? Why would the enemy want to deceive anyone to blind them? Because he has an agenda. See, physical eyes only look at the man. Spiritual eyes search the agenda and its influence. There's a difference. That's why we're seeing so much affliction of man, 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 man. And, and what are they trying, they're trying to create in uh, uh, an escalation of anger, hatred, and violence to prevent individuals from seeing the agenda. Satan had an agenda. Hey, does everybody get this? He had a what? An agenda. He had a plan. What? To create his own race. He wanted to be like God. Remember the Lord said, Oh, Lucifer, how you have fallen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Is everybody okay? All right. It says here then, so the woman saw that the what? Tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, which is lust of the eye, lust of the flesh and pride of life. And she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. In other words, to partake is to agree. Everyone say to partake is to agree. Now I want you to understand that everything that God is talking about here is symbolic. Trees represent spirits in the Bible. Come on, do you think God just created Adam to take care of a garden? No, he created him to be the ruler and authority. In fact, he said to him, Adam, you name all the animals now. You're my son. You're made in my image and likeness. I'm going to teach you and train you to be just like me. But there's going to be a process. And then he finally got to a point where, okay, the animals just aren't sufficient. I'm going to create you a woman. I won't go any further than that. It was a blessing. <laughs> That's why he put him to sleep, right? Surprise! <laughs> and there she be. <laughs> but she was made in the image of Adam, and Adam was made in the image of God. So there was male and female. And in this, the things, the trees that were recognized in the garden were actually spirits. You've got to remember, because now the fallen angels and Lucifer was under the authority of Adam. Can you imagine Lucifer cleaning toilets? Anyways, in the, so here we have in the garden, you've got... Lucifer enticing her. Why didn't she go after why didn't he go after Adam? Because he couldn't access Adam. Adam was made in the image of God. She was made in the image of Adam. So she was not only that, there was another reason. Adam couldn't produce children. She could. See he was looking to create his own race. And he was wanting to stop the race of God. So he seduced her. She bore children called Cain and Abel. Which is uh, also backed up by Scripture. 
according to when uh, uh, there were two nations in the womb. One was called, anybody remember, Esau and Jacob. Same thing, lineage lines. And so these two children that were birthed by the serpent, and okay, to go on to Scripture, and it says that the only one, only son that Adam first had was Seth. Why? Because the serpent wanted to produce offspring. He wanted to create his own race. Does everybody understand that? This is where giants came from. And then the rest of the angels, 200 other more angels came in and put on flesh. So you got to understand something. These angels had the ability to put on flesh. And they took women for themselves. That's why the curse came down to the woman because of what occurred. Is everybody okay? Let's go a little further. In verse 7 it says, Then the eyes of both of them were what? Open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. In other words, they got involved in something they never thought about before. Does everybody understand this? And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Why? Because they lost sight of him. And Adam his wife, and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Now they ran from the presence of God instead of running to him. Why? Because darkness had taken over. And they hid themselves behind trees in the garden. Then the Lord called to Adam and he said to him, where are you? Like he didn't know where he was. And so Adam said, here, I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid. Why? Because I couldn't see you no more. Everything changed. And so I hid myself because I was naked and I was afraid. And the Lord said to him, who told you that? Who told you that? Again, I want to come back. To partake is to agree. When you agree with something from deception, whether it's false doctrine, false agenda, blinders come. You become blinded to the truth. I didn't say all the truth. But you become blinded to the agenda that the enemy is trying to portray. The next thing that happened in the garden Not only were they blinded to Satan's influence from that point on, but the birth of self came. Self was now acknowledged. Why? Because they were protecting themselves. They were covering themselves. Self was birthed. What does that mean? Offspring of darkness. Birth of self and desire of self-survival. The next thing that came forth out of this was there was a disconnect with the Creator and His presence. They were removed. They got disconnected. Then what did Adam say? I was afraid. Emotional fear comes. Emotional fear. So the enemy, his greatest weapon is deception, but he controls by fear. You know, there are people who are afraid to be wrong. Something else that occurred, they lost the mind of Christ and became under mind control. But one of the most important things is they lost the voice. They had the voice of God, and then they lost it. And the final thing was the curse of death. So they knew they, had, they were going to die. This was called the first deception or the first delusion that was brought forth on the earth. But I'm going to tell you who'll bring the final one. That's the Lord. But it'll use the enemy. Is everybody okay? The final thing that they lost was authority and dominion. They had no more authority and dominion. That's why they had to have God and the prophets speak to them. God chose prophets to speak to them. That's why so many people are not, they've lost the voice of God. They're, now they're, they're hearing the voice of familiar spirits or doctrines of demons. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. Again, the earth has been invaded by an alien race called Satan's kingdom. They come in multiple forms. They're in our governments. They're in everywhere. Our president calls them the swamp. Swamp creatures. Reptilians. Demonic forces. Whatever. Again, people are still looking at a man and not the agenda. That is when you know people are caught up in deception. But many of them are caught up in the final delusion and don't even know it. And that's what this message is about, to rescue as many people from this final delusion because it's going to escalate. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I encourage you to bear through and listen to this whole teaching. In verse 6, is everybody there? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature, able to receive. Yet not the wisdom of this age or this world. Nor the rulers of this world who are coming to what? Nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the ages for our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. You know, Lucifer wasn't 100% who Jesus was. That's why he tested him. He kept trying to find out who he is. If you're the son of God, if you're this, if you're, does everybody understand? Lucifer never, God kept that such a mystery from him. Even when Jesus, even when the demons begin to say, you're the son of God, Jesus said, be quiet. See, even Lucifer didn't know 100% who Jesus really was. Or he would have never crucified him. Because he knew that crucifixion wasn't going to hold. Does everybody understand that? That was a great mystery that God held from him the whole time. In verse 9, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, Eyes to see, ears to hear. Nor have entered into the heart of man which the things God has prepared for those who what? Love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit. So if you're disconnected from the spirit, are you going to be able to see all of these truths? Are you going to be able to see the things of agenda? No, you're not going to be able to see things spiritually, only physically. And you will fight for what you believe physically because you can't see spiritually. You are disconnected from the spirit of God. But I'm a believer. I speak in tongues. It has no meaning whatsoever. Sin prevents the voice and sin prevents sight. Does everybody understand that? People call themselves believers, but they're really not. Why? To believe means to what? Follow. And how are you going to follow if you don't get it out of here? So there's a lot of baloney going on out there. And God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. That's why you got to be filled with the spirit. So there's a physical area and a spiritual area of discerning fruits. The word says you'll know them by their fruit, right? In other words, you'll know people by their fruit. That's a physical arena, things that you can see physically. But then there's another fruit that you discern through agenda. Does everybody understand this? There's another fruit. You discern what is the motive, what is the agenda, what is the plan, whether it's pleasing of God or not. Listen, we are ambassadors of eternal life. Do you understand that? Everyone say, I'm an ambassador of eternal life. And these people are taken in. They will not make it unless the awakening comes to them. In Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Hallelujah. In 
and verse 26. The Word of God speaks for itself. If people would just read it, they wouldn't have no problems. They'd know what the agendas of all these politicians and false religions that are out there and these political parties. They're still looking carnally, not, physic not spiritually. Physically, they're looking. And they're reacting, not responding. So they're reacting according to the flesh. Why? Because a carnal agenda is a flesh agenda. The Bible warns us of doctrines of demons. Ephesians 4.26, let's speak it. Be angry and do not sin. Hello. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the, nor give place to the devil. That means don't agree. Let him who steals, who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor with working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corruptible word proceed out of your mouth. Let me tell you, I've never seen such an, an organization cuss and curse like I've ever seen before. And many of them. They just throw the F-bomb out and everything they want at any time. No respect. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Grieve the Holy Spirit. So don't make place for the devil and don't grieve the Holy Spirit by what you do or what you agree. Why? Because it will disconnect you from him. And the next thing that shows up is a familiar spirit, and you'll think it's the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to tell you, you'll lose the voice of God, and you'll lose the sight spiritually. And you'll live in your own assumption. And you'll need to get information from the world instead of from the throne. Because you can't hear correctly. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed from the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Look at, again, there's organizations, there's this, or Antifa. I mean, these people are wearing masks. Why? Because they want to hurt people. But all of these people are protected by Satan's kingdom because they are in position in place. Believe me, if you and I did what Hillary Clinton did, you would have lost everything or any some of these other politicians of the left side and what they did. But this is reality. This is what we need to wake up and see. We need to look and see the agenda behind this. Amen? No place of the devil, nor grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? It will disconnect you unless a person repents and turns away from it. Hashtag walk away. Amen? Why? Their eyes become blind. They will lose sight and their ears will become deafened to the voice of God. Because God won't speak. And Jude. Jude. The book of Jude. The book of Jude. In verse 16. Everybody there? In verse 16, let's speak it together. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own what? Loss. Now listen, own loss, own desires, or own doctrine. They have a mouth, great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which you were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that these would be mockers in the what? Last time or last days which we are in. Who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts, ungodly doctrines, beliefs. These are sensual persons who cause divisions. Not having the what? Spirit because they've been disconnected. 
See, the gifts are without, out, without reproach. I don't care if you speak in tongues or not. You can still be get disconnected from the Spirit. The gifts will always remain. He said, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, which means in tongues. Keep yourselves in the love of God, loving, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Wow. Not having the Spirit, influenced by the Spirit of the world and not the eternal life. The Bible explains everything. It is a treasure of wealth, of information, and it is interpreted by the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you won't understand this. The author is the Holy Spirit. You must have the Holy Spirit to truly understand this and interpret it. In 1 Timothy chapter 4. Because he's the only one that correctly can interpret it. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 4. In verse 1, final delusion. You know, there used to be a movie out years ago. It was an old one. It was this old wrestler guy. I don't remember the name of it. But he found these pair of glasses. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Anybody know the name of the flick? What? They live. <laughs> That's a, they live. Yeah, they do. They live in you and you and you. They live. It was about this guy who found these pair of glasses. And when he put them on, he saw other people in these bodies. He was freaking out. And he saw all kinds of um, media and marketing and signs that when he put his glasses on, it, it would say another thing. You love lust. Instead of uh, sale today, you know, I mean, on the physical arena there was another, but in the spiritual arena it was implementing something else to try and manifest a thought in the mind. Listen, we're still doing that. We look at this world is all under the Babylonian system. It's controlled by Babylon. Babylon controlled Rome, and still does. Come on, one of the most corrupt organizations. Can you trust a priest or a nun that walks around with a gothic uniform? God have mercy. And I'm not saying they're all corrupt. But if they were to go to the roots of everything, they'd find out how corrupt things are. Same thing with organizations and political organizations. What's the agenda? What's the agenda? But you won't see it unless you've got the eyes to see and the ears to hear through the Spirit. That means you got to be connected. If you're not connected, you ain't going to hear. You're not going to see. And you're going to walk from deception to deception into the final delusion and lose place in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Now the Spirit expressly says, verse 1, that in the latter times, that's where we're at now, some will depart from the faith. Why? Giving heed to de deceiving spirits and what? Doctrines of demons. I can tell you that anything that is not a promoter of Christ Jesus is a doctrine of a demon. I'm going to say that again. Anything that's not promoting Christ Jesus is a doctrine of demons. And you got the prophets of Baal, of Babylon, that are now in the media. They call themselves news broadcasters or organizations. They are releasing demonic messages, lies, perception, causing people to fall from deception to great delusion. And they are fighting for something that is from the devil, not even knowing they're fighting for it. And some of these are called Christians who don't even see this. Because why? They agreed with it. So many people ob ob uh, voted for Obama because of race and color. Never looking at what his agenda was. Never really looking at where he came from. They voted because he made promises. 
The devil loves to make promises and didn't fulfill them. Amen? Oh, let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2. Second Thessalonians 2, chapter 2. This is a message of rescue because it's a message of truth. It's a message of love, not hate. In verse 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 9. For you remember, brethren, our labor and toil. Okay, I'm in verse 1. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> I'm in the right one now. In verse 9, yeah. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and what? Lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception, that means doctrine. Among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. Oh, or the love of the true gospel. That they might be what? Saved. And for this reason, God will send them what? Strong delusion. That is the final delusion. That they should believe the lie. This is already happening. It's already started. They're already in it. We're trying to rescue them from it. Again, it's not about the name of the organizations, the name of religions. It's about the agenda, what is behind it, what it's promoting. But people won't hear it or see it without the Spirit. In verse 12, that they all may be what? Condemned who did not believe the what? Truth or the gospel. Or the way. Or live the way. But had pleasure at what? In unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved, to, by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification of the Spirit. So when there's a disconnect from the Spirit, there's no more sanctification. Why? Because people agreed with doctrine of demons. That's all it takes is one agreement to compromise, one agreement to get you off path, and then you continue on with it. Then you're fighting for something that's promoting the devil instead of promoting God. God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification of the Spirit and belief and follow of the truth. That means living His way. Living whose way? His way. Again, this is the final delusion. Amen? We are in the days of the final delusion stages of events exposing doctrines of demons. They are promoting agendas. These agendas are offensive to God and the doctrine of Christ. Again, we've talked about you'll know them by their fruits physically and spiritually. Again, carnal eyes only see the man. They may judge by the fruits of a person. You got to judge by the fruits of the agenda. What is behind? Amen. This is a rescue message for now and for the future. And again, the word tells us make no place for the devil, no, no, make no place for false doctrine. Don't come and agree with it. Because why? If you grieve the Holy Spirit or you agree with any of these things, the enemy's going to come in and you become blinded and deaf to the things of God. You know, there are doctrines that promote abortion, sexual perversion, false deities, idols, greed, selfishness, witchcraft. One world order for Satan's kingdom. That's why the, the organizations that want open borders, why would you want open borders? I mean, but they live in homes with fences and borders and guards. 
But for United States, they want open borders. Why do they want open borders? We're the only country that really doesn't have them. Because they want to promote a one world order. They want a one world race, one world religion, one world doctrine. Why they kill everyone else off so they have their own race on earth. Is everybody okay? False religions. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to mention, I mean, there's not, a, there's not just one organization, there's multiple. I mean, look at all the religions that promote deities that are false. There's only one way home, that's through Christ Jesus. Not Muhammad, not any of these other whatever idols and whatever. These are all lies of demonic forces, every single one of them. <laughs> Even the Democratic Party has a doctrine of demons. I don't know if you saw it or not. I was looking it up the other day because I remember that when this was going on, it blew me away. The DNC, the de uh, demonic, same thing. The Democratic National Conference, when they began to mention God, the whole place booed. They booed God. They were taken on a vote of something about God. They booed God. Can you imagine? A whole convention, the whole Democratic Party was booing God. They could not mention God in the conference. I would say that's Antichrist. They could not mention God. So they had to vote on it multiple times. They kept saying, well, who is opposed and who is for it? And they were yelling and screaming. And they just stepped back and pushed it forth because they knew that if they took God out, it would affect their elections, even though they didn't mention God at all. But they themselves are under false doctrine, promoting a false doctrine. It is one of the most evil, corrupt organizations. That's one of them. There's multiples of them. They're all connected. What's their focus? To dethrone America and Israel. You know, you think about it. How come right now is the only time out of all the years and all the presidents, all the administrations, that this president, if anything, <laughs> put our capital in Jerusalem, our embassy, to show that we are with Israel. No one else has. They've all talked about it to try pacify. Swelling words. Would you turn to Isaiah 66? Isaiah 66. Anybody okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Isaiah 66. And verse, let's see, verse 4. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. This is what the Lord said. He said, so I will what? Choose their delusions and bring their fears on them. Why? Because when I called, no one answered. In other words, they didn't turn their ways. When I spoke, they did not hear. But they did, not, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. I want to ask you this. Does God delight in the doctrine of the Democratic Party? No. Does he delight in the doctrine of Islamic Party? No. How about the Hindu Party? No. He doesn't delight in any doctrine but his own. Does everybody understand that? It still baffles me that how can people promote an organization that boos God and promotes abortion and promote sexual perversion. It just doesn't make no sense to me. The only thing that comes back to me is when the Lord brought me this and said, they're under final 
delusion. And it's going to escalate. And they will not be raptured. They will be left behind. Hopefully they'll get rescued then. Is everybody okay? He's going to choose their final delusions. He's going to allow them to believe the lie. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, Oh, hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 1. What's going to eventually happen is there, the promotion of what's happening for Globalism and one world order, no borders, you know, no rules, sanctuary cities, and all this other stuff is to bring illegal immigrants in and hope to change the laws because that's what they're trying to do now so that they can get illegal immigrants to vote. Amen. And they prom promise them education, health care. They'll do everything else just like Lucifer. He's a liar. And they're, and they're not going to be able to provide it, but they're just trying to get in for power so they can dismantle and the Christ kingdom here and become one world order. This is what this is all about. See, what's going to eventually happen is um, these false religions and so forth are, uh, uh, because they reject the will of God, they take people and can't make them captives to their doctrines. When eventually what's going to ha happen is they want to increase regulations and demands why? Because they want to squeeze out businesses. Now think about this. They want to squeeze out business. They promise all the socialism. They want to squeeze out. They want to put more regulations and so forth, which Trump already removed because there were some. Obama was already doing this. He was promoting for that one world order with all regulations and everything. No off oil, no line, no drilling, no nothing. No, he was trying all of these regulations of coal and government and, and then the lie of this climate stuff. All of this is a false impartation to regulate capitalism to dismantle it. why were they trying to do that because they want to get everyone to depend on the government make the government bigger until they get to people to a point where you can't eat unless you take the mark but see the carnal eye and the carnal ear doesn't see her hear this or understand this but this is where we're leading to this is where it's all happening we're in it right now first Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9 oh hallelujah we know verse 9 knowing this I started 8 but we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully <laughs> Knowing this, the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy and profane, for the murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, that's lesbians and homosexuals and cross-dressers or transgenders, whatever they are. And those are not, look at it's not the people, it's the demons in them that are doing this. It's not them. They've just got demons in them, and they don't know it. Did you ever think about this? Okay, remember, there's Adam and Eve, male and female, right? But did you ever notice that in these relationships, uh, the sodomite relationships, one is always dressing like a dude, and the other is dressing like a girl? Why? Because its original state was male and female. So why not just end up with a woman if you're a dude and end up with a guy if you're a girl? What's the problem, man? Does everybody get this? I mean, think about this. Man, when I, when you can tell one's still wearing boxer shorts and the other one's not. Whatever it is. I mean, but really. I mean, if people don't understand it and see that there's something wrong with this, why well, heck you want to be with the same sex, but you're dressed like a dude? 
Go get it, dude. Anyways, verse 10. For fornicators and sodomites, for kidnappers. Hello, those are child abductors. For liars, that's the Democratic Party. For perjurers. And if there are any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, although I was formerly a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent man. But I attained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Now, God can use anyone, can he? How many of y'all know, look at Moses, who was a murderer. David, who was a peeping David, right? Saul, who was rebellious and listen, please, was a man pleaser instead of God pleaser. <laughs> I mean, think about all of these other ones, you know. God can use Trump. People are still looking at the man, not the agenda. If people just remove Trump and look at all the agenda, what's going on, and stop listening to the prophetic, um, I mean, the uh, prophets of Baal in the media, they wouldn't be deceived, lied, under deception, and under the final delusion because that's where many are right now. Many. 2 Corinthians 6. And I'm going to... Pro- oh, man. Might have gotten carried away with this one. It's because I... You know, God's love for people that are deceived is overwhelming. It was overwhelming to me. I just kept crying, Lord, we need to rescue them. What can we do? They've been taken under final delusion. They're going to die and end up in hell and think they're okay. 2 Corinthians 6. In verse 14. Is everybody there? Do not be unevenly yoked with what? Unbelievers. <laughs> now, an unbeliever is one, it doesn't matter whether they say they're Christian or not. If they're not following and living the life of Christ, they are an unbeliever. Does everybody get it? For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? God calls them darkness because they're in deception, they're under delusion. And what accord has Christ with Belial? It's a demonic deity. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And where do they get their belief system from? Doctrines. Doctrines of demons that come in books. Political agendas. Prophet, uh, false prophets. False religions. All of these things. These are all Baal prophets with doctrines of demons. Remember, there is a battle spiritually. This rule, this earth is ruled by Satan's kingdom under the Babylonian system. In verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God, and they're going to be my people if they do something. If you what? Therefore, it means if you do something. Come out from among them. What? The Babylonian system. The Babylonian agenda. And be separate, says the Lord. And do not touch what is unclean or do not touch and agree. And I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And I'm going to close at Luke 6 because I got too many afterwards. Part two. Come out from among them. What the snap? Hallelujah. Luke six or Luke Luke four sixteen. Did I say four? I did now, didn't I? Luke 4, 16. 
<laughs> what did I say? Luke what? That's next week, maybe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Final delusion. How many of you all want to be in it? Well, praise God. Don't get disconnected from the Spirit. Verse 16, let's do it. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up at his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's Holy Spirit. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom or liberty to those who have been taken captive, especially by false doctrines, and to recover the sight of the blind. Why? Because a false agenda, false doctrine brings what? Blindness. Because that was what was lost in the garden. To recover the sight to the blind and to set at liberty, freedom, those who are oppressed by the doctrine of oppression. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he looked, then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down in the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Boy, did they freak out. Come on, you're nothing but Joe's son, Mary's son, a carpenter. You know why? No spiritual sight. Jesus had, man, he just, he tore them up. I mean, really, sometimes. When they just kept refusing and attacking him. You remember when the Pharisees and Sadducees and whatever, and, and they came out to him, always trying to trick him. <laughs> what did he say to them? You don't understand the scriptures. In other words, you interpret according to your own understanding. And you are of your father, the devil, who was a liar. And he called them hypocrites and everything. He didn't take no garbage. Man, you say anything these days, you got a hate crime. Even when you're telling the truth. You know why? Because many can't handle the truth. They don't want to handle the truth. They don't want to be responsible or accountable. They're still out there proclaiming Christ where they still drink, smoke, party, fornicate, watch pornography but yet they're willing to accuse everyone else. And they're not right. They're under the final delusion. But God loves them all. And we've got to get the message out. We've got to get the prayer books out. And we've got to tell people whether you're under the final delusion or not. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for truth. And we thank you for the anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage. Again, we welcome you here. We repent for anything that we've come in agreement with that has brought any kind of blinders on us or deafness on us. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound abundantly as we prepare our hearts for communion with you and empty our pockets for your glory. In Jesus' name.